March 2, 2001. 7.34 p.m. Janie is 13. She doesn't have a sleeping bag, but Carrie has an extra that Janie can use. Janie sets her plastic grocery bag on the floor by the couch in, Jer in Carrie's living room. Inside the bag is a handmade birthday gift for Carrie, Janie's pajamas, and a toothbrush. She's nervous, but Carrie's chattering enough for the both of them, waiting for Carrie's other new friend, Melinda Jeffers, to show up. Yes, that Mel Melinda Jeffers. Uh, of the Field Ridge North Side Jefferses. Apparently, Melinda Jeffers is also the president of the Made Janie Hannigan Miserable Club. Janie wipes her sweating hands on her p jeans. Mel when Melinda arrives, Carrie doesn't fawn over her. Janie nods hello. Melinda smirks. Tries to whisper something to Carrie, but Carrie ignores her and says, Hey, let's do Janie's hair. Melinda throws a daggered look at Carrie. Carrie smiles brightly at Janie, asking her with her eyes if it's okay. Janie squelches a grin, and Melinda shrugs and pretends like she doesn't mind after all. Even though Car Janie knows it's killing her. The three girls grow slowly more comfortable, or rather just resigned with one another. They put on makeup and watch Carrie's favorite videos of old comedians, some of whom Janie's never heard of before. And then they play Truth or Dare. Carrie alternates. Truth, dare, truth, dare, truth, dare. Melinda always picks truth. And then there's Janie. Janie never picks truth. She's a dare girl. That way, nobody gets inside. She can't afford to let anyone inside. They might find out her secret. The giggles become hysterics when Melinda's dare for Janie to run outside through the snow barefoot around to the backyard, take off her clothes, and make a snow angel. Janie doesn't have a problem with that. Because, really, what does she have to lose? She'll take that over the dare. She'll take that dare over having to give up her secrets any day. Melinda watches Janie as arms folded in the cold night air and with a sneer on her face. Well, Carrie giggles and helps Janie get her sweatshirt and jeans back over her wet body. Carrie takes Janie's bra, fills the cup with snow and slingshots them like snowballs at Melinda. Ew, gross, Melinda sneers. Where to get that old grudgy thing? The Salvation Army? Janie giggles fade. She grabs the bra back from Carrie and shoves it in her jean pocket. Embarrassed. No, she says hotly, then giggles again. It was goodwill. Why does it look... Why? Does it look familiar? Jane, Carrie snorts. Even Melinda laughs reluctantly. They trudge back inside for popcorn. 11.34 p.m. The noise level in the living room of Carrie's house fades along with the lights after Mr. Brent, Carrie's dad, stomps to the doorway and hollers at the three girls to shut up and get to sleep. Janie zips up the musty-smelling sleeping bag and closes her eyes, but she's too hyper to sleep after that exhilarating naked snow angel. She had a fun evening despite Melinda. She learned what it was like to be a rich girl. This sounds nice for about a day, but too many stinking lessons. And that Luke Drake is a supposedly the hottest boy in the class, in Carrie's mind. And what people like Melinda do four times a year. They take vacations to exotic places. Who knew? Now the hush here goes subside around her, and Janie opens her eyes to stare at the dark ceiling. She's glad to be here, even though L Melinda teases her about her clothes. Melinda even had the nerve to ask Janie why she never wears anything new. But Carrie shuts her up with a sudden explanation. Janie, you look simply stunning with your hair back like that, doesn't you, Melinda? For the first time ever, Janie's hair is in French braids, and now, lying in the sleeping bag, she finds the bumps, pressing against her scalp through the pin thin pillow. Maybe Carrie could teach her how to do it sometime. She has to pee, but she's afraid to get up in case Carrie's father hears her and yells again. She rests quietly like the other girls, listening to the breathe as they dr drift off to sleep. Melinda is in the middle, curled on, on her side, facing Carrie, her back to Janie. 12.14 a.m. The ceiling clouds over oh, and disappears. Janie blinks since she is at school, in civics class. She looks around and realizes she is not in her normal fourth period class, but in the class that follows hers. She stands at the back of the room, there are no empty seats. Mrs. Percelli, the teacher, drones about a 
judicial branch of government and with the su Supreme Court of Justice wear under their robes. No one seems surprised that Miss Percelli is teaching them this. Some of the kids take notes. Janie looks around at the faces in the room. In the third row, seated in the center of the desk, is Melinda. Melinda has a dreamy look on her face. She's staring at someone in, in the row next to her, one seat forward. As the teacher talks, Melinda stands up and slowly approaches the person she's been staring at. From the back of the room, Janie cannot see who it is. The teacher doesn't appear to notice. Melinda kneels next to the desk and touches the person's hand. In slow motion, the person turns to Melinda, touches her cheek, and then leans forward. To forward. The two of them kiss. After a moment, they both rise to their feet, still kissing. When they part, Janie can see the face of Melinda's kissing partner. Melinda led her partner by the hand to the front of the room and opens the door of the supply closet. The bell rings, and like ants, the students crowd at the door to leave. The ceiling in Carrie Brown's living room appears again as Melinda sighs and flops into her stomach in the sleeping bag next to Jamie. Cripes, thinks Jamie. She looks at the clock. It's one twenty-three a.m. One twenty-four a.m. Janie rolls onto her side and she's waking up, walking in the forest. It's dark from shade, not light. A few rays of weak sunlight slip through the tree cover. Walking in front of Janie is Carrie. They walk for what seems like a mile or more, and suddenly a rush, rushing river appears a few steps in front of them. Carrie stops and cups her ear, listening for something. She calls out in a desperate voice, Carson? Carson! Over and over. Carrie calls the name until the forest rings of her voice. Carrie walks along the high bank and stumbles over a tree root. Janie bumps into her, falls, and then Carrie helps her up. She gives Janie a puzzled look and says, You've never been here before. Carrie turns back to, to her search for Carson. Her cries grow louder. There is a splash in the river and a little boy appears above the surface, bobbing and moving swiftly in the current. Janie runs along in the bank and cries, Carson! Get out of there! Carson! The boy grins and chokes on the water. He goes under and resurfaces. Carrie is frantic. She reaches out, reaches out her hand to the boy. But it makes no difference. The bank is too high, the river too wide, for her to come close to reaching him. She's crying now. Janie watch it, watches, her heart pounding. The boy is still grinning and choking, still falling under the water. He's drowning. Help him! Carrie screams. Save him! Janie leaps towards the boy in the water. But she lands on the bank in the same spot she took off from. She tries again and Carrie screams. But, uh, but the results are the same. The boy's eyes are closed now. His grin has turned eerie. From the water behind the boy, an enormous shark bursts from, from the surface, mouth open, hundreds of sharp teeth gleaming. It closes its mouth around, around the boy and disappears. Carrie sits up in her sleeping bag and screams. Janie screams too, but it catches in her throat. Her voice is heart, hor hoarse. Her fingers are numb. Her body shakes from the nightmare. The two girls look at each other in the darkness. Well, Melinda stirs, groans, and goes back to sleep. Are you okay? Janie whispers, sitting up. Carrie nods, breathing hard. She whispers, laughs, embarrassed. Her voice shakes. I'm sorry I woke you. Bad dream. Car Janie hesitates. Do you want to talk about it? Her mind is racing. No. Nah. Go back to sleep. Carrie rolls to her side. Melinda stirs, rolls a few inches closer to Carrie, and is quiet again. Janie glances at the clock. 3.42 a.m. She is exhausted. She drifts off to sleep.